ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان احسن الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد that we begin by praising Allah seeking his aid his assistance and his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our souls and from the evils of our actions and we believe as muslims that whom save Allah the mighty and majestic was to guide then there is none to misguide and whomsoever Allah misguides because there is a disease or a perversion in your hearts then there is none to guide except for Allah i also bear witness that there is nothing which has a right to be worshiped except Allah alone and i bear witness that muhammad may the peace and blessings of allah be upon him is his servant and his final messenger the best speech is the speech of allah which is the quran the best of examples and guidance is the example and the guidance of the chosen prophet al mustafa abu al qasim muhammad bin abdullah bin abdul mutalib from the tribe of banu hashim from the tribe of quraish he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muhammad the finality of all of the prophets and all of the messengers he is the best of all examples to be followed in all our affairs whether it be private or public open or hidden whether it be something on a national level international level community society there is no better example than the example of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say in this khutbatul haja regarding himself that he used to say khairul hadi hadi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the best of guidance and examples is the guidance of the messenger of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that the worst of all affairs the sharr al amur the worst of all affairs are the matters that are invented by the people as acts of worship in this religion of al islam for which they have no proof from the book of allah nor from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they worship allah upon ignorance not having any proof for their action or in the manner in their action is performed and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that these newly invented acts of worship are uh, in a, 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 a misguidance and every misguidance is in the hellfire so we seek refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost uh, my sisters we seek refuge with allah jalla wa ala from the sharr from the evil of the misguidance and from the evil of where the misguidance leads us and that is the naru jahannam the fire of jahannam where those who disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who do not refer back in their affairs with regard to their difficulties and with regard to their ibadah and with regard to their obedience and they don't give the right of tawhid the right that it deserves the tawhid that the messengers salawatu allah alayhi alayhim that those messengers who allah jalla wa ala sent sent with the message of tawhid wa laqad ba'athna fi kulli ummatin rasula an na'budu allah wa tajtanibu at-taghut that we did not send except a messenger to every single nation calling them to the worship of allah and away from the worship of the false deities and no doubt my sisters the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that indeed i was shown the hellfire and i saw that the majority of its inhabitants were the women i was shown the hellfire and i saw that the majority of the inhabitants of the hellfire were women and this is due to the kufr that you commit or due to uh, this unbelief that you commit so they said do we disbelieve in allah ya rasul allah he said no rather this is your ingratitude ingratitude towards your husbands in gratitude towards the good that comes to you so we find from these affairs that sometimes <clears throat> wallahu almusta'an that our sisters that they are the furthest from our community in terms of seeking knowledge meaning from the salafiyun and from the salafi community from this community of ahlu sunna that they pay the least amount of attention to the seeking of knowledge that they 
because of the uh, of the decoration of the dunya and because of that which they seek to which they see to be more important that they distance themselves from knowledge and they keep themselves away from knowledge and rather they busy themselves with the affairs of the dunya some of those affairs without doubt being important but many of them being futile and not of not offering of uh, offering you any importance in the least so it is an encouragement from the ulama of al-islam the likes of sheikh ibn baz sheikh ibn thaymin sheikh al-albani sheikh muqbil sheikh rabia and the rest of the ulama sheikh al-fawzan and other than them abdullah gudayan an encouragement that the woman should be from those who are, who is at the forefront of seeking ilm and and seeking knowledge and acting upon that knowledge because my sisters the knowledge the knowledge of the aqeedah especially the knowledge of the correct islamic faith the correct islamic aqeedah is something that must be established in the heart of every single muslim the one who has no aqeedah has no foundation the one who has no true faith understanding of the correct islamic belief knowing the correct islamic creed then that person has no religion and if his understanding of the aqeedah or her understanding of the aqeedah is not sahih is not correct then they are not then their deen will not be mustaqim their deen their religion will not be stead will not be uh, upon a straight way will not be steadfast and you find our sisters falling weak in their iman becoming weak in their iman and implementation of the deen becoming lazy with regard to their ibadat and you find that this spreads in the family it begins maybe with either the father or the mother and then you find that it spreads in the family the children become weaker the wife's weak the husband becomes weaker the husband is weak the wife will become weaker because this is the nature of things sometimes for a family that is not established upon the correct islamic aqeedah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the quran in numerous places that we must be upon this siratul mustaqim that we must be upon this straight way this upright way as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated wa anna hadha sirati mustaqiman fattabi'uh wa la tattabi'u subal fattafarraqa bikum an sabilihi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and this is my straight path so follow it and do not follow the other paths mean the paths of deviation for they will separate you away from his straight path and likewise the statement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where allah said inna alladhina qalu rabbana allah thumma istaqamu that uh, that indeed those who say allah is our lord rabbana allah they say allah is our lord thumma istaqamu then they are steadfast upright and steadfast تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم تعدون. That Allah mentions then those who say that Allah is our Lord and then they remain steadfast upon them descend the angels the ملائكة and saying to them fear not no grief but receive glad tidings of Jannah with which you have been promised. And then Allah continues to say Nahnu awliya'ukum fil hayati ad-dunya wal fil wa fi akhir wa fil akhirah And we are your allies your friends in this world and in the hereafter we have been your allies and your friends in this world and we will be your allies and your friends in the hereafter in the in the next life Wa lakum fiha ma tashtahi anfusukum wa lakum fiha ma tad'un That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and we have been your friends in this life and are also your friends in the hereafter and therein you shall have all your inner self desires and all that you, that you ask for this is in jannah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down his angels allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down his glad tidings upon who upon those who say that allah is our lord and then they are steadfast steadfast upon what ya ikhwan wa akhawat my sisters steadfast upon the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam qul in kuntum tuhibbun allaha fattabi'uni 
يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. That Allah Jalla wa Ala states, Say to them, O Muhammad, If you truly love Allah, then follow me, and Allah will love you. So this steadfastness, this istiqama, this being upright upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, does not come about except by a person, except by a person following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you cannot follow the sunnah, and you cannot understand this deen except by seeking knowledge thereof, except by seeking knowledge of it. And wallahi my sisters, the desires of the people out there, the desires of the women in the streets, and the way that they behave, and the way that you look at the society around you and the community around you, in this society that we are living in, wallahi, you have nothing to be envious of them for. They have nothing to offer us. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ummah with regard to the following of the desires of the people. As Allah mentions, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيَةٍ مِنَ الْعَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّهُمْ لَا يُغْنُوا عَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَإِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْدُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْدُ وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah has mentioned, and we have put you, O Muhammad, and by extension, the Ummah, that we have put you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon a plain way of sharia, of legislation, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So, so follow that. And do not follow the desires of those who do not know. Do not follow the desires of those who do not know. Verily they can avail you nothing against Allah. Verily the wrongdoers are protectors and helpers one to another. But Allah is the helper and the protector of the pious. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my sisters, has commanded us commanded you, commanded me, and commanded the rest of the ummah, that we don't follow the desires of those who do not know. We don't follow the desires of the society around us. Those juhal, those ignorant ones, who have not recognized their Lord, nor do they make ibadah of their Lord. Nor do they have concern for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nor do they have concern for the hereafter. Allah, Allah Jalla wa Ala tells His Messenger, commands him, don't follow their desires. For indeed they can avail you nothing in front of Allah. Because when you are raised Yawm Al-Qiyamah, everything that you looked at the decoration of this dunya, and you envied the ways of the kuffar, and you wanted to be like them, dress like them, talk like them, walk like them, listen to the music that they listen to, watch the movies that they watch, watch the telly that they watch, try to raise your children like they raise their children. They can avail you nothing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, with regard to them, وَإِنَّ ذَالِمِينَ بَعْدُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءِ بَعْدُ That indeed, the ظَالِمُونَ, the wrongdoers, the transgressors, they are بَعْدُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْدُ That they are friends and allies one to another. So the wrongdoers, this is how they are. But as for, the, as for those who follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they are the ones who say that our Lord is Allah. And then they have istiqama, steadfastness upon this deen. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَ Then upon them the angels descend. And upon them the angels say to them, Do not fear and do not grieve. For indeed we give you glad tidings of Jannah. The Jannah which, which, uh, which we have promised you. So therefore my sisters, may Allah bless you. And may Allah guide you and guide us that the way of Islam and the deen of Al-Islam, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that if you want to be a wali of Allah, if you want to be an ally of Allah, a friend of Allah, and you want Allah to love you, and you want to be loved by Allah, protected by Allah, then you have no need to follow the desires of the people around you who are distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we mentioned the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ثُمَّ جَأَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيَّةٍ مِنَ الْعَمْرِ That indeed, we have put you upon a plain way. The plain way of the sharia. So follow that. وَلَا تَتَّبِ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And do not follow the desires, the base desires of those who do not know. 
So yes, you will walk in the street, you will go to the shopping centers and the malls. And you will see things that you desire. You'll see uh, people and women and men dressed in certain ways, behaving in certain ways. Men who remove their, their clothing and they dress like the kuffar, removing their Islamic garments because they want to fit in. Women who remove their hijabs. And you may think to yourselves, that why can't I be like them? The reason why is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّهُمْ لَا يُغْنُوا أَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا For indeed they will not avail you before Allah in anything. So whatever they have, it will not avail you. They will not be able to avail you before Allah. And indeed the thalimeen, the wrongdoers, the transgressors, they are friends and allies of each other. Friends and allies of each other. As for Allah, then He is the ally of the believers. Likewise, the malaika, the angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down as protectors and guardians of the believing slaves. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ And we are your allies, your friends, in this life and in the hereafter. So my sisters, recognize the fact that society around you is corrupted. It is morally corrupt. It is something that were you to follow it, it would take you nowhere except towards the direction of the hellfire. And were you to follow the desires of the society around you, then know that not only would you corrupt yourself, you would corrupt your families and your children. Because the parents are the first example for the children. If that example is sayyi'ah, if that example is an evil example, then that's the first example that they will take to. So if we are not good examples, it's bad enough. It's bad enough that we ourselves are going to be facing our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of the sinful deeds and all of the evil that we've done. Never, never, never mind facing our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala with the evils of our children because we were the ones who brought them into these evil examples. So yes, you may face your Lord and your Lord may punish you, but your Lord may increase you in your punishment because you were the evil example towards your children. That you had no concern for them and you did not guide them. And wallahi, there's a time when you're going to be lying in your grave, my sisters. You will lie in your grave and Munkar and Nakir will come to you. These two angels will come to you in your grave and they will ask you, who was your Lord? Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who was this man, meaning Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam? Those of you that are living in doubt and those people that lived in doubt, then they will not be able to answer but rather they will groan and they will moan as the angels ask them. So they will make groaning noises. Ah! Ah! As the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ mentions. Then they will say, they will say that we heard the people say something and we repeated after them. This is the Islam of many of the people today. We heard our fathers saying it, so we said it. We heard our grandparents saying it, so we said it. We heard our qabila and our, uh, our tribesmen saying it, so we said it. And many of the sisters, many of the sisters who a lot of the time their salafiyya is a salafiyya by association, not a salafiyya by ilm. Their salafiyya and their establishment upon salafiyya is not a firm establishment. They are Salafi because they happen to marry a Salafi. Or they are Salafi because they happen to have a friend who is a Salafi. And had they married a non-Salafi, a person who was not upon the Sunnah, a person who was following his desires, falling into innovation, then they'd be upon that deen today. This is not the way of our religion. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ 
Allah commands with having knowledge of La ilaha illallah. Have knowledge, Allah said, of the fact that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah and then seek forgiveness for your sins. So we say that, that when those angels come to you in the grave, what's your answer going to be? Are you going to be from the righteous and from the pious and the truthful and be steadfast in your grave so that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open a gate in your grave, open a, open a door either to the hellfire or to paradise. Which of the doors is going to be open to you? Which of the punishment will you, will you receive? The Prophet wasallam said that the wrongdoers are punished in their graves. They are punished in their graves. And were you, be, were you able to hear the screaming of the dead ones in their grave? By Allah, you would stop burying your dead. Were you to be made to hear the screaming of those being punished in their grave? You would stop burying your dead. The Prophet wasallam said that everyone can hear the screaming in the grave of those who are being punished except for mankind and jinn. So the screaming of the people in their grave, because when Munkar and Nakir and the angels come to punish the ones in their graves, and some of them will be Muslims who ascribe themselves to Islam, but they fell into sins, major sins continually, without seeking the tawbah and repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they persisted upon that way. So we say with regard to this affair, and with regard to affairs similar to this, that we say that when that when Munkar and Nakir come to you in your grave, and they are being and, and they bring their tools of punishment, like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, that that person who answers the question, then and uh, the angel will come with an iron rod, and were that iron rod to strike a mountain the mountain would turn to dust. Were the iron rod to strike a mountain, the mountain would be turned to dust. So where are you with regard to this, my sisters? How often do you ponder over these affairs? Or do you just allow your iman to slip and slip and slip? And you don't care about your religion. And you have no jealousy for the sunnah. And you go and sit and take knowledge from every Bakr and Zaid. From every Tom, Dick and Harry. You are not concerned with regard to your religion. You are not jealous with regard to your Salafiyyah. Nor do you, and, and rather on top of that, you envy the life of this world. The life of this world that those kuffar and those mushrikeen. And those mulhideen. And those Muslims. Those Muslims who have followed their own desires. And they have left the guidance of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in much of their affairs. So you find our Muslim women undressing in public, naked yet dressed. And you find them increasing in fornication from the signs of the hour. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the hour will not be established up until one of them that you will find that, 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 that men and women they will openly copulate just like animals, like donkeys. And that time is very close to us now, if not already upon us. These are the things that we envy in the society around us. A society that jumps from one event to another event so they can forget death. And this is what they are calling you to. You have nothing to, to envy them for. Nor should you wish to resemble them. Rather, living in this society, we are the ones who should be having an effect upon them. Not that they should be corrupting our morals. Rather, we are the ones, when we look at the weak Muslims, that the weak Muslims look at us and they say, oh, I want to be like her. When a, when a sister looks at you, one of these, like, like the girls across the road in the school here, no hijab, huh? no, no haya, no shame, because they weren't taught shame. No sense of wanting to be a part of their religion and Islam. They hear the adhan five times a day and they don't pray. We are the ones that should be setting examples for them, not looking at them and thinking, well, I wish I was like that. I wish I was, I had what they had. 
Rather, we should be the ones setting the example. Not letting society around us set the example so that we are daily, continually envying them. How are your children going to... If you are in that state, imagine how your children are going to be 15, 20 years from now. Wallahu musta'an. Wallahu musta'an. How are our children going to be in days to come, in years to come? If we are setting this example for them, are they going to be better? If a society begins to, to defragment and a society begins to fall apart, then the generation that comes after is always worse than the generation that came before. And this is proven in hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Prophet of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said, there is not a time except that the time that comes after it is worse than the time that came before it. So how are you going to change this? How are you going to rectify my sisters? How often we find that if you look towards, a sister will ring and she'll say, brother, I need to speak to a sister because I feel shy in speaking to her. Who do we refer her to? Out of fear that if I refer her to one of our sisters, that she's not going to gain any benefit from her. Not going to gain any benefit. She's ringing for guidance. For example, for a role model. Who do we guide? These sisters who are ignorant. Probably doesn't wear hijab. Listens to music. Having problems in the home. Being called to all types of fitting. Drugs and alcohol and boys and fornication. Music, movies, cinema, everything. No worship of Allah. Phones, I need to speak about a personal matter to a sister. Who do I guide her to? If we don't have a community of sisters that I can put my hand on my heart and say that yes, here's a number, here's another number, here's another number, here's five numbers. Ring any of them, I trust them. Can we do that right now? Wallahu a'lam if I can do that right now. And Allah knows best. This is the state that we are in. In our societies and our communities in the West. That we are losing grip. I'm talking about our Salafi sisters. We're losing grip. Wallahi, the other day I was, we were outside a brother's house knocking on his door to go into his house. Behind me I could hear a car going past, windows open. And the music was ridiculously, incredulously loud. I turned around to look. Wallahi, it was one of the sisters. No shame. The Prophet ﷺ said, If you have no shame, do as you please. If you have no shame, do as you please. How? When Allah Jalla wa Allah hides our sins in the night. Hides our sins. The shortcomings that we have. And who is there from the children of Adam who doesn't fall, fall into error? Every single one of us. But where's the hiding of the sin? Where is the covering of the sin? I've committed a sin, let me hide it. Ask Allah to forgive me. Not in the daytime that you go out and call others to it. We have a hard enough time as it is. Then we need our sisters and our brothers for that matter. That they set bad examples. And they set, uh, as, as role models, the furthest from the way of the companions of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My sisters, remember that the Prophet ﷺ said that all of this world is a utility. All of the world is about needs and provisions. The whole, this is how Allah created the ard. The fruits, we take them because they're a provision. The, the boats upon the oceans, Allah has blessed them for us and given us the ability to make them as a blessing from Allah, as a provision. As a utility, we use it to get from A to B. All of the earth is like this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and the best of the utilities of the earth is a righteous wife. Is a righteous wife. So you could be the best of the need, of the utility of the earth, is a righteous wife. So where's this righteousness now? And with something else that we've noticed over the years, is the stopping there used to be a time when a sister would see an evil and she would say, Ittakillah ya ukhti. Fear Allah, my sister. 
What you have done is wrong. Not with harshness, with gentleness, mildness. Teaching her. Sister, what you did was haram. Have taqwa of Allah. Nowadays you find a sister committing a sin. The other sister not correcting her but joining her. So where did you get that from? How did you do that? I've been wanting to do that. This is what's beginning to happen. Sisters that have been around for 10 years, maybe over 10 years, the deen of Allah Jalla wa ala, the more that you do righteous actions, the more that you increase in daraja, in the sight of Allah. The more you increase in rank with Allah Jalla wa ala. After 10 years, our deeds, good deeds should be accumulated, far outweighing the evil. This is what a person should be aiming for. How is it that a person enters into the deen and they become stronger and then they fall to the wayside and they become weaker to the extent that they become evil examples for others? How can this be the case? How can you allow yourself to enter or to, or to fall into a rut? A rut from where that, that you fall into and you become ingrained within that way. Where's the enjoining of the good and the forbidding of the evil of the sisters? I'm not saying with harshness. As the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith. He said, O oh Aisha, that gentleness is not introduced into a matter except that it beautifies it. And harshness is not introduced into a matter except that it makes it ugly, disfigures it. So we say yes with gentleness, but the absolute forbiddance and not forbidding, not forbidding the evil when you see an evil, not trying to enjoy the good. This is a poison and a cancer. If it spreads through society and communities, it will, it will make them collapse, defragment, like a forest fire. Forest fire that begins. Uh, and you've heard about them, like in America or in Australia in the bush. A person is there, he just drops a cigarette. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, cigarettes are haram. Cigarettes and smoking is haram. So anyway, they drop a cigarette or they drop a match. The match catches just a leaf. And then within 24 hours, 400,000 acres of forest is going up in flames. Within 24 hours, or less than 24 hours. Huh? Why? Because that thing that began it at the beginning, which no one really pays too much attention to. Societies will, co will, will collapse. So now, our children, how are they going to be raised? And what effect are they going to have on the society around them? Think about it, my sisters. Be a utility of the dunya, the best of utilities, the righteous wife. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, or, or the Thawban radiallahu anhu narrated, hadith in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah. He narrated that when revelation was sent down concerning silver and gold, they said, so which wealth shall we possess? So Umar radiallahu anhu said, I shall find out for you. So he hastened upon his camel and he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he came to the Prophet of Allah alayhi salatu wa He said, Ya Rasulullah, which wealth shall we possess? Which wealth shall we possess? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Let one of you possess a heart which is thankful, grateful to Allah. A tongue which remembers Allah much. And a believing wife who helps you upon the affairs of the hereafter. This is the wealth that we need to possess. The heart that is thankful for everything that Allah has given us. Allah has given us wealth. Allah has given you food. Allah has given you the air to breathe. Allah has given you the water to drink. Allah has put you in a community of Salafis where there are links with Shaykh Abdullah al Ghudayan. They are links with Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri. They are links with some of the other mashaykh. We have a brother going through the books of Sheikh al-Fawzan. We have people teaching the ilm, teaching the Arabic language, so you have direct access to the Qur'an. 
a heart that is thankful for that which Allah has given you. Children that you have, who breathe and eat and drink, who have eyes and ears that Allah did not take away from them. So where's the thankful heart? Where's the thankful heart? You don't thank Allah, the blessing will be taken away from you. This is the sunnah of Allah Jalla wa ala. Allah gives you a blessing. And Allah does not take away the blessing. Except that there was something that you did. Except that there was something that you did. So Allah blessed the companions radiallahu anhum. By the time the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his own came down from Mount Hira with the revelation on his own. Gave the da'wah to Khadija radiallahu anha, his wife, entered into Islam. One man, one woman. Then he invited his cousin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the first boy to enter into Islam. Then he invited Abu Bakr, the first man to enter into Islam. And other than that from the companions, one man, by the time of his death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the, by the time of his death, 23 years later, the whole of the Arabian Peninsula was given to the believers. The whole of the peninsula. They had already warred with the Romans. The battle had been taken to Fars, uh, to the Persians. The Egyptian Christians had already started sending their jizya. Yemen had, had come under the control of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. Then within the next 60 to 70 years, the Muslims were in Europe. The companions, a few of the companions died in Cyprus. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. On the other side, on the doors of China. Some of the great ulama of al-Islam. Uh, Abu Hamza al-Sukhari. Or Abu Hamza al-Khurasani. From the teachers of Ibn Mubarak. From the, foot, from the borders of Afghanistan. From the teachers of Abdullah ibn Mubarak, the great imam who in turn was from the teachers who narrated to Imam Shafi'i rahimullah, from the teachers of Shafi'i. And then you go to the other side. Ibn Hazm al-Andalusi, a Spanish alim. Ibn Abdul Bar, Spaniard. So when Allah takes away that blessing, know it's something that you did. Al-Jaza, Al-Jaza min jinsil amal. As the principle goes, that your recompense is in accordance to your deeds. You have problems in your home, my sisters. My husband's doing this and my husband's doing that. He doesn't listen. He doesn't grow his beard. He doesn't follow the sunnah. He doesn't do this. Look towards your own self. Look towards your own self. Do you have a heart that is thankful? Do you have a tongue that remembers Allah much? And do, are you the type of wife who helps her husband upon the affairs of the hereafter. How sincere are you with regard to this? Where is your iman? How many times am I asked the question in a dars or in a circle? Brother, my iman is low. How do I increase the iman? How do I increase the iman? You increase the iman by righteous actions. The more righteous actions that you do, the more your iman increases. The more righteous actions that you do, the more your iman increases. The more you read Quran, the more your iman increases. This is the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah. This is the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The iman increases with obedience to Allah and decreases with disobedience to Allah. You obey Allah, your iman increases. This is how it is. The more you read Quran, the more you donate. The more you give in sadaqah, the more you f- teach your children, the more you give da'wah, the more you enjoy the good, the more you forbid the evil, the more you encourage your husband upon the sunnah, the more your iman increases. The more you pray, the more tahajjud you pray, the more sunnah you pray. If you fast on a Monday, you fast on a Thursday, your iman increases. You don't believe me? This is the aqeedah of Ahlu Sunnah bil ijma By consensus, iman increases. As the Prophet ﷺ said, 
that indeed Allah does not scan, that Allah Jalla wa Allah does not look at your forms, meaning your body. Nor will Allah look at your color. Allah is not concerned whether you're black, whether you're a white sister, black sister, yellow sister. Allah doesn't. Allah is not concerned with regard to your color. Nor with regard to whether you're eight stone or whether you're eighteen stone. This is not the concern. Allah will not look at your color. Nor will Allah look at your form. That you are more beautiful, so you have more right to Jannah. And if you're ugly, you have a right to the hellfire. This is not how Allah Jalla wa Allah judges the people. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah does not look at your form, Allah does not look at your color. But rather, Allah scans the hearts and the actions. The heart and the actions. This is what Allah Jalla wa Allah looks towards. So, how is your heart? Your heart is going to be weak if your ilm is weak. If you do not know what Munkir and Nakir are going to do to you in your grave, then your iman is not going to be like the one who knows what Munkir and Nakir can do to you in your grave. Because the one who knows is going to fear Allah more than the one who does not know. This is how it is. And the one who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knows the punishment of Allah, my sisters, he is the one who is going to be more aware and he's going to be the one who fears Allah more, loves Allah more. If you fear Allah more and love Allah more, aren't you going to do those deeds that are going to bring you closer to Allah? So when you know the munkir and nakir, what they're going to do, or the angel when it comes and he strikes the person in the head, that if he was to strike a mountain, a mountain would turn to dust. And the other punishments of the barzakh, like the tearing of the cheeks, and the crushing of the jaw, and the dropping of the rock upon the head of the person, and the drowning of the people in the barzakh, all of this occurs in the grave. All of this occurs in the grave. The one who knows this, the one who, the one who, who has read about this, is not like the one who does not know this. Because the one who does not know this, then to him ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. So they happily strolling around the earth in their jahl and ignorance, none the wiser. None the wiser. So as Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz used to say, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, be wise with regard to your affair. Be wise, use some wisdom. Know what is about to come upon you and act accordingly in regard to that. How many of you, my sisters, are acting in accordance to that? There are some traits. There are some traits. We finish in 10 minutes. There are some traits and attributes of a righteous wife. That you, my sisters, and attributes of a righteous woman, that you, my sisters, need to inculcate. And likewise, the men who want to establish a righteous home, then it's not like many of the brothers, Allahul Musta'an. May Allah guide them. They know all the hadith as it relates to the women. The Prophet ﷺ said that you must do this. The Prophet ﷺ said you must do that. The Prophet ﷺ said you must do this. So they'll memorize everything in their favor. But they'll forget all the rights that the wife has over them. This religion is a religion of haquq. The whole of the deen of al-Islam is a religion of rights. The right of Allah upon the servant as in the hadith of Mu'ad bin Jabal. The right of the servant with regard to Allah. Allah. The servants have a right with regard to Allah. As in the hadith of Mu'ad with the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ was on the back of a donkey with the messenger of Allah ﷺ. And, he said to the, and, and, and the Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah? Oh Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? He said Allah and his messenger know best. So then he said the right of Allah upon the servant is that the servant worships him alone without partners. And the right of the servant with regard to Allah is that if he does that, then Allah will not punish him. Allah will not punish him. Then there are rights of the mother and the father with regard to the children. How many of these rights are being fulfilled? I'm not talking about the children five, six, seven years old. I'm talking about grown men and grown women who don't give their parents their rights. They don't visit them, they don't call them, they don't phone them, they don't shower them with gifts. They don't obey them. They turn towards their parents in disgust 
and that is the Muslim ones. And likewise, the non-Muslim parents have rights likewise. That you visit them, and you care for them, and you go to them, and you shower them with gifts. I mean, Bab Aula, that it is a greater right that you shower with gifts your non-Muslim parents. Why? Because that will give them an even greater encouragement about the beauty of Al-Islam. It's a right parents have upon their children. The right of the wife with regard to her husband. The husband must provide for her, must feed her, must look after her, must be with her when she needs him, and give her children. These are the rights that the wife has with regard to the husband. As Allah Jalla wa Ala has stated, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّمُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْدَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدٍ وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ That men have an authority over the women. No doubt the men have an authority over the women. Huh? Due to the excellence which Allah has given to the man over the woman and due to the wealth that they spend upon them. This is the reason why. Not that Allah just left it. The man has a right, to, the man has authority over the woman and that's it. Because that's the part that the man will quote to the wife. Because he's, he's well versed. And as Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, from the signs of Ahlul Haq, the people of truth, that the people of truth will mention that which is for them and that which is against them. From the kitab and from the sunnah. A sign from the people of deviation is that they will mention only that which is for them and put to the side that which is against them. As for Ahlul Haq, then Ahlul Haq will say, Ar-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa. That the men have an authority over the woman, have a strength over the woman, due to what? Due to the excellence which Allah has given to the man over the woman. This excellence is what? Excellence in his creation. Excellence with regard to his deen. Excellence with regard to his establishment of the deen. That there is not a time that a man, except that he's praying his five daily prayers. Is it the same for the woman? No. When she's menstruating or postnatal bleeding, she doesn't pray her five daily prayers. Likewise with fasting, there's not a time except that a man will fast. He may have other, an excuse not to fast, such as illness, or such as upon a journey. But that is an, that is an excuse not to fast. An allowance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the woman, it's forbidden for her to fast when she's menstruating. So the man has been given excellence over the woman. Due, and, and likewise, as Allah mentioned, بِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ Due to that which they provide from their wealth and they spend upon them. That they spend upon the women. So Shaykh Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned. So he said that the reason, or likewise, the men are particularized with having to spend upon their wives. And indeed spending in many ways which are particular to the men, which distinguish them from the women. So perhaps the reason for the saying of Allah Jalla wa Ala, وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا Due to the wealth that they spend, and exactly what they spend is not stated, to indicate that spending referred to is general. So the excellence of the man is that he looks after her. He provides for her. He, 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 he takes on the responsibility. And the, and the qawama, or this, or this them being qawamun, or having an authority over the woman, because he is the one responsible for taking care of her welfare. Managing their affairs and disciplining them. So you find men today don't want to manage the affair of the woman. You're, you to your life, me to my life. You do what you want, I do what I want. This is not, qawwa, this is not the, the qawwama that Allah Jalla wa Ala gave to the man over the woman. The authority as, Imam, as, as Al-Qasimi rahimahullah mentioned, Al-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa He said that this is the man taking care of the welfare of the woman. Managing their affairs and disciplining them. That is that they are in charge of them. And they are to take care of the manners and the behavior of the women. Ordering them and forbidding them. Just as the ruler is responsible for the subjects. Just as the ruler is responsible over the subjects. So this is the responsibility of the husband. How many times you hear the man saying, or you find a brother saying, I just leave her to do what she wants to do. 
I just leave her to do what she wants to do. Enjoying the good, no forbidding the evil, no managing her affairs, no looking after the affairs. Is this the way? Billahi, this is not the way. This is not the way. So the righteous wife is the woman that she guards and preserves herself and her honor, even in the absence of her husband. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, فَالسَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِذَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِذَ اللَّهِ And as Allah mentions, Therefore the righteous women are obedient to Allah and their husbands. That's the meaning of the ayah, the tafsir of the ayah. And guard what Allah has ordered them to guard, meaning their chastity and their husbands' property in the absence of their husbands. In the absence of their husbands. So they guard themselves, the honor. My sisters, your voice, when you're going out there shouting and screaming and talking and beautifying your voices, you have to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in yourselves, upon yourselves, in your families, in your homes. The righteous women are obedient to Allah. That's the righteous woman. First and foremost, obedience to Allah jalla wa ala. Allah commands you to pray, pray. On time. Don't sleep through Fajr. Shaitan urinating in your ear. Don't sleep through Fajr. And you wake up late and you say, and, and it becomes a habit of yours. And then you tell me that you weaken your iman. You weaken your iman is because your ilm is low, your knowledge is low. And your actions upon the deen are deficient. Your obedience to Allah, you're distancing yourself. You increase in disobedience. You don't cultivate your children. Then you get the phone call when the boy or the girl are 12 years old. Brother, you know, my daughter, she doesn't listen to me. She doesn't want to wear the hijab. She leaves the house without hijab. You're ringing me when she's 12? Where were you when she was 3 and 4 and 5? Where were you then with regard to your children? You're ringing me now? When she's 12? What can I do when she's 12? In this society, all she has to do is go and knock on the door of someone. And that's you finished with regard to your children. Educate them, cultivate them now. Don't make your children and yourselves a fuel for the hellfire. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu quu anfusikum wa ahlikum nara. Oh you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire whose fuel is men and stone. Save yourselves. Don't make your children a fuel for the hellfire. Don't make yourselves a fuel for the hellfire. Grab them when they're young. This taboo term, indoctrination. Yes, we indoctrinate. Name me an ideology or a doctrine that does not indoctrinate. That's why it's called a doctrine. We indoctrinate with good Islamic morals. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't deceive. Be upright, be transparent. This is the way of the Muslim. We don't deceive, we don't break our contracts. We follow the sunnah, we worship Allah alone. This is the morals and the morality that we indoctrinate our children upon. Yes. An indoctrination that is correct, that is truthful, that is honest, that is God sent. Allah Jalla wa Allah revealed it. So my sisters, take heed. Take heed of the day when you'll be raised before your Rabb. Take heed of the day when you are in your graves. And either you are in bliss and happiness and joy or your body is being crushed and beaten and torn continually. Take heed of that day because that day will come. It will come upon me, it will come upon you. And we seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of Allah. Because who are you going to seek refuge from? From the punishment of Allah except with Allah. When we flee from, Allah, when we flee from the punishment of Allah, we don't flee except to Him. Except to Him. You can't escape Allah. You're going to have to answer for yourselves, for your children, for your families. Likewise, the husbands are going to have to answer. You are managers of the household, discipl disciplinarians. Who discipline. Discipline in the prophetic manner. Not disciplining with punches and bruises. These aren't rijal. 
Allah created the woman weak. He didn't create her weak so that you can brutalize her and beat her. Beat her black and blue. This is not our way. This is not the way of Islam and the Sunnah and definitely not the way of Salafiyyah. Men have to take their responsibility. Women have to take their responsibility. Otherwise, fear for the next generation and fear for your akhirah. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Wa subhanahu bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. The proceeding has been a presentation of Al-Maktabatu Salafiyya and SalafiBookstore.com.